Well, here we are in pit lane at Sandown International Motor Raceways, round four of the Victorian Circuit Racing Championships. Sports cars are on the track at the moment. We're here on a Saturday, and we just thought we'd take you for a bit of a tour around the paddock to uh, meet, see who we can catch up with, see what cars are running this weekend in a number of categories. If you want to come out here, remember the State Series, you'll see some really impressive cars. So just join us. We're going to see who we can find. OK, well, the car I wasn't expecting to see uh, here at the Victorian State Championship this weekend is the uh, Lamborghini Huracan behind us. And Jim Manolius, tell us about the uh, tell us about this spectacular-looking car. It's Now, it's not the GT3 version. It's the Trofeo Trophy car. Tell us what's different between this and the car we see at things like the Blanc Pain. Uh, it's uh, similar to the GT3, but it's uh, built more on a road car uh, setup. So the front tyres are a bit uh, narrower. It doesn't have the uh, aero that the GD3 car has, but it's got the same engine, sort of gearbox configuration, uh, etc. So it's they're quick, but uh, not as slippery as the GD3s. So you're racing this weekend in the production sports car category at the Victorian State Series. How does this fit in with the uh, with the regulations with regulations there? They're showing a bit of flexibility to let you guys uh, bring this round and have a bit of a play. No, it's um, it's homologated as a as a sports car 2B, I think, so it's it fits into the category quite nicely. I mean, it is a production sports car. Well, very much so. Of course, we see these uh, racing in. They've got their own one make series, very successful. We've actually covered many many years ago. We were in um, in Inner Mongolia of all places, covering the Asian version of this, along with the uh, Audi R8 LMS Cup. So this has been around for a long time. I mean, do you ever see a envisage a time when these will be these things will be running a series here, or might we be able to attract, say, the, one of the Asian series to come out here as well? Yeah, we introduced them uh, last year. We run them as part of the GD Championship uh, in the Trofeo Challenge class and we're hoping that uh, a few more people will pick them up. They're a great value uh, sports car and instantly ready for racing, great for the gentleman driver, really predictable and nice car to start with. Very spectacular looking car with all the aero on it and all the, the bits and pieces. You mentioned the GT Championship, of course, now you're running the GT Championship. Uh, next round out here at Sandown, coming up in a, in a couple of months' time. There's been some talk about some uh, problems with the Championship. The numbers haven't been quite what, they, uh, what we'd hoped that they'd be. What's the future of that Championship now and how do we get the numbers back to where we'd love, love to see them? Well, we've been running, the last two events have been the endurance rounds. And the endurance rounds are really wrapped around the GD3s and GD4s. We don't get the trophy class cars or even the challenge cars that we would normally get. So the numbers have been down. I mean, everybody's got a reason for not running. They're on holidays, the um, you know business trips, etc., uh, etc. Et Our categories. Uh, it's snow season for a start. Well, yeah. I mean, and running them during school holidays is a bit of a challenge. Uh, most of the guys that have these sort of cars have got a good disposable income and they're off uh, doing something else. So we're, um, we've been struggling a little bit against that. But the um, two uh, sprint rounds that we've got coming up, they're already well, well subscribed. And the uh, super sprint that we're doing at part of uh, Challenge Bathurst is also looking pretty good. So I think the numbers will be, will be back up. Next year we're changing the formats uh, completely. This year we inherited a bit um, because we, we bought the category late in the season and decisions had already been made about uh, where we were running and who with who. Uh, next year is all ours. So in terms of where you are running, I mean, I suppose that's the, the problem that you've got in this category. Everybody, of course, would love to see the be out there in front of the big crowds with the V8 supercars and all the rest of it at big events like Bathurst and Clipsal and uh, all the South Australian Adelaide 500. But of course, that has its own problems because you're very much playing second fiddle to the to the supercars. Where do you see the perfect place? Is it a, is it a mixture? Is it having more control over your your own destiny with your own run meetings, or is it being a part of the Shannon's Nationals? I think the first part of it is to be on tracks that suit the GTs. You know, where we're going to Gold Coast and places like that that really aren't GT GT tracks. I think uh, the first thing we'll do next year is there'll be a heavy accent on Bathurst, uh, heavy accent on Phillip Island, tracks where you can really use the cars. You mentioned GT4 before. I mean, I've been looking at GT4s. It's taken off 
big time overseas. I mean, the racing has been fantastic, and they're supposedly a more affordable car. Hasn't caught, quite caught on in the same way. I mean, do you see that as being a potential major growth area for the Australian Championship? Yeah, it's uh, far more affordable. You know, the GD3s have become more expensive, more complex. Uh, you need a solid team in order to run them, whereas the GD4s are more like the Trofeo Challenge, you know, a, a road car ad adaptation. And, uh, yeah, that, I think that area is going to grow and we're going to be focusing a lot on it next year. What about the relationship between the championship and people like SRO and all that? That seems to be the, the secret source is having a close relationship with Stefan Rattel's organisation. Um, are you in contact with them in terms of like trying to, you know, in, perhaps integrate sort of, you know, the, the Asian series, the Blancpain series and that into the Australian scene? Yeah, constantly. We uh, talk to SRO a lot. Um, we run by their rules, so next year we're changing our driver classifications, our pit stop times to match what happens uh, in Asia and uh, the United States. So there's no, there won't be this complex formula anymore. Uh, that's the, kind of the first step toward moving towards a true Blancpain type uh, configuration for our races. The but. Uh, SRO have been terrific, yeah, they're really big supporters of the category and we're hoping to do more with them next year. We hope maybe even entice uh, them to have one of their races with us uh, in Australia. Well, that'll be something to look forward to because we've seen the Asian series just take off you know, huge in the last couple of years. And, of course, we've got the Asian Le Mans series coming at the start of next year at the Bend. So, um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of perhaps a bit of a speed bump at the moment, but things are still looking good for the category ahead. Yeah, it takes a little bit of work and uh, obviously we're kind of always working one year ahead. So the changes we're making now and the tracks we're setting up, we're not going to feel them until next year. But, uh, well, we'll get through the Endurance Championship this year and I think things will start to look up. OK, well, it's great to see, the, great to see you out and about on, with this car this weekend. How are you going with this so far? You've had to qualifying. Uh, what are you, where are you on the grid and how's it all work, coming together for this weekend? I'm uh, third on the grid. I had a beautiful pirouetting spin uh, on the second lap on cold tyres and that kind of threw me threw me off a little bit and then we were red, red flagged but uh, oh, I'm in and amongst it and I'm having a lot of fun and catching up with a lot of old friends that I haven't seen for quite a while. Okay, we're up the back here of the pits at Sandown for the Victorian State Championship, and we just found this beautiful looking bit of kit here. Um, Anthony, just having a look at it. Anthony, tell us about uh, this car. This is a Mark. Um, well, we'll call it a Mustang. Um, yeah. They're not too keen on you calling it a Mustang, but that's what it looks like to me. No, it's definitely a Mustang. Definitely a Mustang. Mark, Mark Mustang. Mark II it is. So tell us the history of this car. I mean, uh, where did it come from? How did you guys end up with it? And what are you doing with it here at Sandown? Uh, Ryan McLeod built it out of uh, Norwood in, in, um, in Brisbane. Uh, it's build number six uh, that he's done. And it's, it's definitely a, a car that we want to be a front runner in. And at the moment, the next couple of rounds is going to be all about learning the car and making sure we keep it on the black stuff and get get some reasonable lap times to begin with and get comfortable and yeah make make it work yeah now we've done we've done stories in the past about the first generation of the mark cars which had the the, the mazda bodies and the ford focus body and all this this is a very sleek looking thing it looks absolutely magnificent this is what a mustang race car should look like um now, but tell us about it, because it's an interesting car, because it sort of straddles a couple of classes. It's not quite a sports van, it's not quite a sports car. It's very unique. So um, where are you running it here this weekend at, uh, at Sandown? Yeah, it's running, it's running sports sedans this weekend, and um, it's going to have the capacity to run GT1s as well, which we're, we're looking to do. Um, we're going to do all the typical rounds this, this season, you know, Sandown and, and Phillip Island, and we're actually going to Eastern Creek in five weeks. Um, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do Bathurst next year too, uh, for the Easter six hour, I believe it will be. So um, we're gonna do some upgrades uh, in the engine department, and um, I guess fine tuning with the debriefing, and and I guess get the driver comfortable in the car because he'll have a he'll have a fair a fair bit of uh, extra horsepower under his right foot. So. Because that's one of the things about these cars, isn't it? They were basically built for endurance racing. I mean, we see them in the Creventic series overseas. So um, this running it in a, in a sprint format, I mean, are they competitive in a sprint format? Because they're not, despite what it looks like, it's not as powerful as some of the cars you're running against, some of the local cars. Yeah, the uh, the, the car's definitely definitely a fast car. Uh, suspension setup is fantastic. It rides the bumps really well. Um, 
f for us, it's it's about getting Con, our driver, comfortable with the car, and, and getting and getting getting the best out of it. So braking where you should be, accelerating where you should be, all that sort of stuff. At the moment, is a little bit soft, but um, it's just about getting comfortable at the moment. Um, it's it's definitely a fast car. The the the, the long races in Europe, um, I believe. One of the Mustangs came, it won its class and came third overall. That says a lot. That's it's a fast car. My cars build ridiculous cars. They're, they're unbelievable. Work class stuff. Definitely work class stuff. Now you mentioned this is one of about six that has been made. Now the interesting thing about it is, apart from being the numbers, they've all got names. This one has a name that's got some local interest. Tell us about. Uh, tell us what this car's called. Yeah, this, these cars get um, get named after Aussie Aussie rock bands or Australian music legends, and uh, this car's name's Farnham. So, yeah, we can do the singing on the track, I reckon. Well, it's, he's a sort of a local connection. He's a local, Johnny's a local boy in this area, just down the road in Dandenong. So, um, there, so I suppose the other thing about this, no matter how many hits it has, it'll just keep coming back time and time again. Yeah, we hopefully it's just, a, it's just number one hit, one hit after another, number one, that's all we want. We will we'll get there. It's, um, we've made some really good improvements over the, overnight. Con's got a lot more confidence in the car now. Um, went out there and uh, did his PB. Um, after after just a handful of laps. So what sort of what sort of times you running here? At the moment, his best times are sixteen four, but um, we basically uh, had a few ABS issues. The car wasn't stopping, um, and even with eight, with no ABS, we're you know in the seventeens, a um, couple laps out with ABS, and he straight away peeled you know seven tenths of a second off off the time. So um, we've got the we've got a race coming up, and our aim is to to crack a to crack a, a low fifteen. Um, but we'll, we'll cross our fingers for a 14, but we'll take a 15. Well, it's a, it's a beautiful looking car out here at Sandown on the weekend. If you're watching at home and you can get out here tomorrow for Sunday, this car will be in action with the production sports cars. So come on out and have a look at the uh, at the Mark Mustang. We'll call it a Mustang because Mark II Mustang because that's certainly what it looks like. Beautiful car, lovely turned out. And um, for now, thanks for joining us in Pitlock. Absolute pleasure, mate. Have a good day, mate. Thanks a lot, Anthony. No Thank you. Okay, let's go and find something else. Well, we're here in the garage number 46 here at Sandown in Pit Lane and uh, Courtney Prince is with us from the Formula Fords and it's been an interesting weekend for you guys. Um, how's your weekend gone? Uh, it didn't start off the best. Um, I qualified 12, uh, just didn't get the toe right, but race one seemed to be all right. There was a few incidents and that, but we made ourselves up to P5. So this is making a sort of a return to Formula Ford at the local level. We've got the national round this weekend. How many cars in your category this weekend? I think there's about 20, but there are some Kent cars. So I think there's about 18 or 20 of us Durotechs. So what's the situation with Formula Ford at the moment? I mean, we don't hear it. It's not, it doesn't have the high profile that it used to, and yet the fields are still pretty good. I mean, from your you know, judgment of it, I mean, how is the series looking right now? Um, I think it's still strong. We've got a strong field every weekend, awesome racing, and you learn so much from this category. It's a very good stepping stone. So I do think Form 4 will get better over time as it keeps producing great racing and big fields. What about, uh, you know, Cams would obviously like people of your vintage to be behind the wheel of a Formula 4. I mean, have you looked at Formula 4 and why have you decided to choose Formula Ford instead? I have looked at Formula 4 and compared to laps you can do in a Formula Ford, compared to F4 for the price, I choose Formula Ford. And also it's a bigger field, harder racing and just always learning so much each weekend. And the thing is, even their series is already over the year. We're not even halfway through the year and their series is over. So you've got, uh, how many rounds have you got left for the rest of the year? i got two more rounds after Sandown and the last round finishes at the end of September. Well, what are your plans for tomorrow? We've had one race out of the, uh, out of the three. You've got two more races tomorrow. What are your plans for them? Uh, just great and well racing and just hopefully stay up there and maybe make up a few more positions. But just race hard and do my best. And keep it straight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which here is easier said than done. Yeah, especially after that race. <laughs> okay, Courtney. Well, good luck for the rest of the weekend. And once again, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thank you so much. Well, we've just had the first race of the weekend for the historic touring cars. And uh, the winner of the race was Andy Clemson in the Mustang. And Andy, in 1972, I came here to my first meeting at Sandown. And there was a, there was a Mustang about this vintage racing then. I think it had a number nine on it, somebody called Moppet or Muppet or something like that. Don't know whatever happened to him, but uh, this certainly brought back memories today. Great field, and uh, you were the man in front. 
Thanks, Brett. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Uh, yes, um, Ellen Moffat is my father's and my hero, I guess you'd, you'd say. Um, we uh, have actually sort of duplicated the, the look of the, the, the later Moffat car, but love those Mustangs. Uh, very happy today. We had a pretty, pretty big field of big boys. Um, lucky enough to get a good break at the start, and I maintained that pace pretty much right through the race. There was no letting up because they were breathing down my neck. So. At these state meetings, I mean, the historic touring cars have been a feature for years. They've been up and down and in and out sort of thing in terms of... But we got a fabulous, uh, fabulous turnout this weekend, and as you say, lots of outright cars. I mean, where are we finding all these cars? Oh, Brett, look, it's, we're going through a bit of a resurgence. A lot of it's to do with a lot of the young guys are showing a bit of interest in coming up through the field. We've also got a lot of the TCM guys, which are stepping back and running with us. So it's making an interesting mix of young, middle and old, I guess. I'm sorry, guys, about the old bit, but, you know. Um, and I think it's, there's a little bit of resurgence. We've got the, the big cars out the front and just as equally hard, hard as trying are the, the categories through the, through the class. It, it's fantastic. We're really enjoying our racing. Tell us about your car. Where did it come from and what's its history? Uh, Brett, we originally started in a, a, an NB car, a Mustang, which was a 1964. Um, had a lot of success in that car, really enjoyed it. Uh, opportunity came that we built uh, our own car, which is it's sort of my hobby, I guess. Uh, we built this one from scratch about five years ago. Um, it's run as a Trans Am car. It's run a little bit all over the place. We've had a lot of fun with it, but we decided to keep it now as a Purist Group N car, and I'm really enjoying my racing, and I, and I love the guys I, I race with, so it's really good. What's the engine in it? 351. Uh, we've got to use a control bore and stroke. Um, our heads are regulated. If we use the world product head, we're not allowed to touch the head in any way. So we are regulated with our engine. We're also same, same with our brakes. So it makes it quite good because it makes it fair and affordable to put a good car together to run against perhaps some bigger dollar cars. As you say, you were out there with the with other Mustangs, but also there's Camaros from that period as well. Does it, does it sort of bring the memories back? Is it a bit of a Walter Mitty moment when you do you think for just a moment, you know, like uh, oh look, you look in look in the mirror and there's Bob Jane and Frank Gardner and all of Bob, Brian Thompson, all those people. Look, it's always in the forefront of my mind. I've loved the cars. I came to Sandown in 1969, and my dad and he sat me on the pit wall, which was on the inside there, and our legs used to hang over the pit wall. Um, but looking in the mirror these days, I see a, a very hotly contested race with a man called John Mann in a Camaro, and that gets the hair on the back of the neck up, and that's why I didn't look backwards today, because I knew John was right behind me and some terrific drivers, Hanson and Michael Marcelli, and the, the field's fabulous, really good. I think this is about the 14th anniversary of John Mann's final retirement. <laughs> we love him, he's a great guy, he can stick around. <laughs> well, it's uh, it was great. What a condition it's like. This is the first time I can remember this meeting being dry and let's, sunny. I mean, we're in the middle of a Melbourne winter. I mean, look at it. I mean, what are the conditions like out there? Well, I'm, I'm actually a roof plumber by trade, so I do know that we've had rain for probably eight days in a row, so we have been blessed today. Uh, the track, the track's good. It's nice and grippy. Um, look, really good, look, really good conditions. The sunshine, the cars look great. and yeah, It was really good, really good. So what's the format for the rest of the weekend? Another couple of races to come? Uh, we've got a race tomorrow morning, which is, I believe is a six-lapper, which is a bit of a warm-up. And then at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon, we have what we call our feature race, which is a 50k plate. Uh, and hopefully we do the same and keep the old white girl out the front. So 50k is a long, uh, long time out on the track with these cars and these brakes. Are you confident that gonna, the brakes are going to last? I think the uh, brakes will probably last better than the driver, Brett. <laughs> so we, we've got a 60 litre tank, we'll have that filled to the brim, and we're probably worried we may not get in, but we'll see how we go. We're looking forward to it. Well, it's something to look forward to tomorrow if people want to come out and, uh, and check out the action here at Sandown, if you're a lover of old American muscle cars and old Australian muscle cars, because we, we talked about the Mustangs Camaras, we've got Chargers, we've got Tirana GDR XU1s, GDHO Phase 3. I mean, for people of my generation, I mean, this is, you know, this is the ultimate fantasy, isn't it? Absolutely, I totally agree. And the, and the preparation of the cars too, they all look fantastic and... You know, so do us drivers, well, we think. <laughs> Just as we say that, the sun disappears from us. Andy, congratulations on race one, and uh, thanks for joining us in pit lane. All right, thank you, Bretton. Good luck, pit lane. Great show. Thanks, guys. Well, I never thought I'd say this at Sandown, but damn this sun. You know, it's middle of middle of winter, and look at what a fabulous day we've got here. Now, if you've been watching in pit lane for a number of years, you might remember, look, look at the power I have. I say, go away, sun, and the, the, the clouds 
Come, oh, only for a second. Don't have as much power as I thought I did. If you've been watching the show for a long time, you'd remember that we used to cover the Porsche 944 Challenge Series around Victoria, and uh, the series is still going strong. And to find out uh, more about some exciting news, we've got Mark Torbett's here from the 944 Association. And Mark, uh, you had some uh, made a recent announcement regarding a tie-in with Porsche Cars Australia. Tell us about that. Yeah, we did, Brett. Um, so we've been working for for a couple of years with the guys from Porsche Australia to try and make something come together so we've been able to, to finally put pen to paper on that with um, thanks to, to Tony Andreski and Troy Bundy from Porsche Australia um, from their motorsport division so we've um, we've now got an exciting opportunity for the winner or the highest place eligible driver from the state series they'll get a run in a GD3 cup car um, which is a, a bit of a money can't buy experience unless you go through all the levels of the Porsche series um, to be able to do that so we're really excited to be able to offer that. We've got Porsche signage on the cars um, now as part of that arrangement as well. So it's strengthening the relationship we've got as, with Porsche um, to be a bit of a feeder category for uh, for any up, up, young up and coming drivers, as well as any uh, guys who want to sort of um, fancy getting in behind the wheel in their later later years. Yeah. Well, Porsche are sort of you know around the world have made a, a lot of their their ladder towards to success. I mean, but the interesting thing is it shows the commitment. I mean, these are a car that sort of you know haven't existed, they haven't sold for you know for a couple of decades now, and yet they're getting right behind this um, and still supporting at this level. So that must make you very excited. It is. Uh, it, it is a great sort of thing that we've been able to do. It's a bit of a young driver initiative. Um, so I mean, we've had a number of um, notable drivers who've come through the series, such as uh, Richard Musket and Dylan O'Keefe, who are, who are doing great things you know both Australia in, in Australia and overseas um, as well as guys like Eric Banner and uh, um, who else is there uh, yeah, Sam Abbey yeah exactly Sam Abbey Brendan Grove um, so yeah there's a number of good guys who, are, who have been through the series um, you know it's driving a rear wheel drive sports car it's a Porsche um, and it's, it's fairly affordable to get into we've got a car down here for sale at um, Sandown this weekend which is for sale for 27 grand as a race ready top line car so um, yeah, it's a great opportunity for someone to get into a, a good racing series so for people who don't know the, the sort of history of the 944 Challenge and exactly what the cars are, just explain quickly you know, what the cars are, what you can do to them and how this all became such a, such a unique part of Victorian motorsport. Uh, Dennis O'Keefe basically started the series. Um, it's, it was combined with Mark Sports to start off with. That was back in 1999. So we've been around a long time. We're the single or second longest running single make category behind HQ. So we've been, we've been around in Australia and in Victoria longer than the Carrera Cup, actually. In fact, so um, so yeah, Dennis started the series. The uh, the rules and the speeds and everything have evolved. But we're running a control suspension package. We're running control uh, brakes. We're running control tyres, control fuel, um, control ECUs. So the cars are very very. Um, similar in specification, so it gives the chance for a driver to come to the fore and uh, improve their skill and their metal behind the wheels. So, yeah. Like I said, it's been very much a part of the Victorian scene. There's been a few uh, sort of attempts for it to go into state, and we hear about. It, but do you think now that you've got this backing of Porsche Cars Australia that uh, it might take off in interstate now? Oh, look, we'd, we'd love it to. The part of the problem, I suppose, is is that being the, the series is quite Victoria-centric, so um, and now that the road cars are all getting sort of quite expensive, so it's it's not as viable as it once might have been for someone to get a, a, a road car or 944 or, or a cheap 944 and turn it into a road into a race car. That's probably not as not as uh, feasible at the moment. Um, but it's certainly, we've got guys who've got 944s interstate, and if they wanted to. Uh, um, sort of come and join the series. We've got a couple of guys. We've got um, Tim Wolf, whose car's behind us here, who's actually flies in from WA every round to race with us, um, and the car's housed here in Victoria. So um, we've gone into, we went into the Tail and Bend last year. We went into South Australia to Malala the year before that. We're looking at doing some rounds in New South Wales next year. So we're trying to sort of branch out and we'll see if we can get a few guys from interstate, certainly. And if enough interest is there, um, we'd certainly look at it. Yeah. Okay, well if people want to find out more about the category, how they get involved, is there a website or something that they can visit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 944challenge.com is our website. Um, look up 944 Racing Association on Facebook. Um, there's a lot of information that's always kept up on there. Um, race reports and race rep previews and points and everything like that. Season, um, you know, photo galleries, everything like that. So, um, yeah, get in contact with, uh, with the committee and um, see if we can get you behind the wheel of one. And if you want to see any uh, any racing from way back when, we've got uh, a number of races up on the In Pit Lane YouTube channel as well. Uh, good luck for the weekend and for the future of the series. But for now, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Beautiful. Thanks, Brett. Appreciate your time. Cheers. Well, that's it. That's the end of our day wandering around the paddock here at Sandown for the Victorian Circuit Racing Championship. We've got the Formula Vs happening in the background. If you're watching uh, on Saturday night, if we can get this up in time on Saturday night, if you're watching early Sunday morning, 
come on down to uh, come on down to Sandown. It'll be a great day of racing tomorrow. Lots of great cars. And if you want to find out more about the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championship, remember to watch us here on In Pit Lane. We've been covering this series for over 20 years, so uh, I think the runs are on the board now. I've always said. This is the best kept secret in all of motorsport. If you want value for money, for your family to come down and have a look at some great racing, this is uh, these are the meetings to come to. Okay, thanks for joining us. Remember, we'll be back in the studio for another series of In Pit Lane Live coming to you starting in September. Uh, and there'll be more details on that later. But right now, from all of us here at In Pit Lane, from Shane behind the camera and from me here, thanks for joining us. Bye for now.